everyone so as promised um, I will be doing a series which I have done already one episode for and this is going to be the second um, the series will be about watercolors and I will be taking predominantly watercolor tubes and um, sharing the information with you about their pigments about the transparency the staining um, and things like that and also give you a little bit of information what these colors are good uh, to be mixed with um, generally and i'm going to talk about the uh, schminke horadam lemon yellow which is a very um, common color um, it's a series one and you can see it right here and that means it will be the cheapest out of um, their different series because obviously the higher the series the more expensive it was to make to produce the watch color so this is a 15 mil tube by the way um, it looks very nice and um, I like the the way there the caps go on I will show you later but so anyways let's go back to the um, light fastness so it's got three stars out of five so they go from one to five and three is kind of in the middle and it is um, titled as light fast then the um, two icons right here so the triangle and the square the triangle uh, stands for staining and in this case it's a semi-staining watercolor and transparency it's a clear square with a line so that means it's semi-transparent um, so that's that in terms of pigments it's right here it's a py3 so it's a single pigment which is perfect this is what you want in your watercolors so in the information here Schminke says uh, lemon yellow is a greenish yellow heavy metal free alternative to cadmium yellow lemon basic yellow with good painting and mixing properties creates brilliant mixtures with phthalo green so that's what i want to try today in terms of paper i'm going to use the windsor newton and it's this paper so it's the um block and I really like it because it's a small size so um, once you remove the strip you can't actually tell whether it's cold pressed or hot pressed and um, it looks like it's got some texture to it but not too much so it makes me think that it, this is actually their hot pressed so, anyway. so the tube has this cap which when you unscrew it's got a long neck and I find that the um, the paint kind of sits really nicely in there and once it screws it comes to a really um, kind of perfect um, tight screw so it it's really sits really well there and I know for sure that no air will get inside there so that's great I really like the design of these tubes so I'm going to use this tier of palette which you can buy from different brands I will try to put a link down below for you um, and it's just quite simple you can tear it off into small pieces okay so I have um, titled it so you know exactly what we're going to work on today so I'm going to grab my brush um, if I haven't said yet, this is the Princeton Heritage around in five. And I'm going to take some of this watercolor and make sure I have a nice creamy paste. So I will show you that you can go uh, from, from the darkest value to the lighter. So here is pretty much a very concentrated um, lemon yellow and then I'm going to wash out the brush okay so Mason has joined us and I'm going to now quickly um, or hope that the watercolor hasn't dried so I'm just I've added a little bit of water and we're getting to a lighter mix and then a little bit more just to get to the very palest 
of the mixer so you can see the total range of it. So it's a lovely color. I'm going to make um, some wet on wet tests as well. So right here. Because I'm still playing with this series and it's rather new, I haven't exactly decided on the setup, but I think I quite like this. Let me know in the comments because I don't want it to be too informative. Um, there is a guy called Liren uh, Yerovsky, I think. I'll put his link down below. If you want something really detailed and kind of scientific, um, he covers pretty much all the info you need so you can um, have a look at his videos but mine is just going to be for those of you who are beginners and just interested in um, kind of information that is quite useful to know but not not an overload in that sense so here I'm doing the wet and wet and that helps us for the um, watercolor technique to see how the watercolor flows some watercolors flow really strongly and quite heavily and sort of give nice edges um, of the watercolor and some don't so this one doesn't seem to be moving too fast so now i'm going to go and get the phthalo green which is i'm going to use my huge palette so the phthalo green is right here that's the phthalo green and I'm going to mix it as recommended by Schminke and see what kind of colors I can get. But typically I would use this lemon yellow to mix greens. So I would mix it with blue. So let me try and mix it with a few classic blues such as ultramarine blue or um, delft blue, indigo, something like that. I'll give a nice range of dark and bluish blues as well. So I'm just thinking where to put my palette because it always takes so much space on the desk so round about here I think should be good so I'm going to mix the color on this little portable palette so I'm going to take this lemon yellow just a little bit and mix it up in this corner and I want it to be quite um, quite thick because there will be a bit of uh, diluting going on. So I'm just going to get the phthalo green now from the palette. This is the pan and add it to this yellow. Now, um, this isn't my favorite kind of green because it's a little bit too bright and a little bit too unnatural. But what I will do now is add a little bit more of the yellow and see whether that will soften it down slightly more. So that's quite nice. Still a little bit too bright for a natural green. You can see it's almost sort of glowing. And let me do a third attempt of adding even more yellow to this. So it's quite pretty, very juicy. It's like a juicy green apple um, type of color. Very rarely would you see this color in nature. So I would go ahead now and try to mix up some of this um, other colors. So I'm going to go for the ultramarine finest. So let me just get a little bit of yellow on here. I hope you can see I'm trying to get everything in focus or in frame rather so okay so ultramarine blue would be a color that you use quite often to mix your greens so you can see now the color is a lot more different so this is the ultramarine so the next one is going to be be the same thing just adding a little bit more of the yellow this is a very pretty color more more my kind of color 
so very pretty and then again let's add a little bit more yellow to this and see where we can bring it up to so that's that so that was ultramarine blue next one let's try in fact cerulean blue hue i think this one is so that should give us something interesting okay i'm running out of space i'm going to get another piece of this paper the um, tier of palette and i'm going to actually now just make a couple more spaces here i think i'll go i'll go for three and i'll try to use up all of the yellow okay so like I said cerulean blue hue so it's a very bluish blue and I'll show you very quickly um, what it looks like so here is the ultramarine blue that we just did and here is the cerulean blue hue that I will do now so let's do this one here So this brings us to like a viridian, a viridian green, which I'm not too keen on. It's also very similar to uh, the phthalo green as well. So now let's go back for more yellow. And yes, yeah, so it's very similar to the first row. And again, more yellow. Okay, let's try it with Delph Blue. Delph Blue is this one here. So I'm curious to see what kind of mix I would get with that color. Okay, I hope you can see here. So let me just grab some more of the yellow. Oh, this is a really nice color, very natural. It's a type of green that I like a lot. Okay, so the greens here I'm getting are very, very pretty. Um, very nice. So Delph Blue definitely works for me. And let's try the last one, which is the Indigo. So it's going to be very, very dark. So it's this one here. And I'm going to, to just take a very little amount of it because it's going to be quite strong uh, but maybe still a little bit more okay so there we go so that's our indigo very nice color perhaps I could have used even more of the indigo but it is what it is and then I'm going to use the remaining of the yellow of the uh, lemon yellow and see what we can get so it's getting quite diluted at this point let's try it with Prussian blue I think Prussian blue would be an interesting mix I'm just going to squeeze it out just the smallest amount for this and let's go for Prussian blue okay so I'm going to use let me just move it up slightly so you can see how I'm mixing it up so I'm going to bring in that lovely lemon yellow over here, like that. And then I'm going to add some Prussian blue into here. And let's have a look. So this is a very kind of grassy green. Not as unnatural as the other two, but it's definitely quite bright looking. Good boy, thank you, Mason. And finally, this one here. Okay, so the watercolors are nice and dry. I have titled everything here. And I just want to give you a little close up so you can have a look um, at the color dispersion here. So nothing much happened. Um, it is a very lovely color. 
very clear very sort of it has that brilliance to it it's so very nice um, and here are the greens so I could get a variety of quite um, juicy and sort of bright and almost unnatural greens and a nice variety of very toned down very interesting greens that's my personal opinion anyway um, some of you might prefer this um, side um, to versus this side so let's just have a quick run through again so phthalic green so this is uh, this green right here wood lemon yellow we got these colors ultramarine finest is right here um, so we've got this row of colors cerulean blue hue this row very similar to the phthalo green but if you look at phthalo green and cerulean blue you might be surprised because they look quite different but mixing with lemon yellow you get very similar if not identical colors very but yeah quite similar probably would be the best way to describe it delft blue is this one here let me put it on this side for you so oops so that's delft blue and it's this variety we got indigo um, to be fair i think i could have gotten a lot darker um mix here but it, i think i just had a bit too much water and very little pigment left at that point so that's the indigo mix and then finally prussian blue um is right here so that's the colors we got here so very pretty um i really like this side and yeah so yeah thanks for watching and see you soon